All right, we're joined now by a very special guest. Whether you watch Heroes, you like the Howard Stern Show, and of course Star Trek, George Takei is here. Great to meet you. Thank you Good for being here. Good to be here in Arizona. <laughs> I didn't realize you had such ties to the state, but you do. Yes, I'm married to an uh, Arizonan, born right here in Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, really? And uh, his mother lived in uh, Linden, up in the White Mountains. Oh, nice. Brad, lovely man, just met him a short yeah, time ago. Yeah, there he Good is, guy right there. Waving off stage. And uh, when she passed, we scattered her uh, ashes in the Mo uh, Mogollon Rim. She loved the White Mountains. Do you get back here much? We do. We've got a place up there. Oh, nice. In Cholo. And uh, whenever we need a little rest and re renewal, <laughs> you hit it. we go back there to renew our bodies and souls. It's amazing uh, when I look at your career, and you've been in the public eye now since the, the mid-60s, right, with Star Trek. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got generations of fans. Uh, from Star Trek into the, all the movies, uh, Howard Stern Show, social heroes. media, you're huge on social media, heroes. Uh, what's that like, having I mean, all different ranges of people? Well, I passionately love acting. That's what uh, fulfills me. And to uh, be able to be uh, working for all these many years is uh, very fulfilling. My idol is Angela Lansbury. Oh, She's yeah. uh, in her 90s now, early 90s, 91 or 92. And every, every year she's on Broadway with a new play. Mm -hmm. And most recently, she toured all of Australia, from Sydney all the way to the Western End, Perth, uh, with Driving Miss Daisy with uh, James Earl Jones. In her 90s. In her 90s. Is that your goal then? You're, do you mind if I say you're 77? Oh, I'm, I'm a youngster yet. <laughs> My grandmother lived to 104. Oh, wow. And one night she went to bed and she never woke up. But she had a great attitude to life. She saw everything in a larger context. And she said, I'm watching the human comedy. And she was wow. always chortling, especially at her grandchildren. Me. <laughs> <laughs> you made her laugh. And speaking of laughing, uh, we're talking about more of your present day stuff. You were just on the Howard Stern show last week. I mean, <laughs> and uh, what's that like? I mean, you lay everything out there on that show. And that's kind of the way you've got to be. And you're immensely popular there. Is that what's well, that like being on there? Believe me. I pay the price for laying everything out there when I get home. You do? <laughs> Brad's not quite so happy with everything out there? <laughs> he always says, why did you have to talk about that? <laughs> uh, last night we saw you here in town uh, talking about um, Fred Duval. And, uh, exactly. And you, you're very out there with your politics. Why is that important to you? Well, when I was five years old, I remember that morning when Soldiers with bayonets on their rifles came to our home and ordered us out. And we were taken from there first to the horse stables of a racetrack while the camps were being built. Now, this is World War II. And this is Japanese World War II, counts. yes. No, Japanese-American. Right. We weren't oh, captured by the Japanese. We were, we were uh, imprisoned by our own government. We're American citizens. Right. My mother was born in Sacramento, my father was a San Franciscan, I was born in Los Angeles. But we happened to look like the people that bombed Pearl Harbor, and we were looked at with suspicion and fear and outright hatred. And that didn't happen with Germans or no, Italians, did it? because they looked like the rest of America. We were at war, at war with Germany and Italy too, but, yeah, and first of all, they were too numerous. You know, if you put all of them in internment camps, right. you know, the economy, the, the nation would collapse. Sure. We were a small min a minority, and it was one of the most egregious violations of the Constitution because there were no charges. You know, you can't arrest people without charges, you, and you couldn't arrest people for being uh, Japanese of Japanese ancestry, looking like the people that bombed Pearl Harbor. So your your formative young years were spent behind a fence, and because of that, when I was a teenager. I had many, many long after-dinner conversations with my father, and he explained to me that our democracy is a people's democracy, and it can be as great as a people can be, and we've achieved many great things, but it's also as fallible as people are. They can be swept up in hysteria for, uh, when some uh, horrific calamity happens, and that's what happened to us. And he said, We've got to be active participants in the democratic process. It's a participatory democracy. And support the people who cherish the ideals, the shining ideals of our democracy. 
And one Sunday he said, George, I'm going to take you downtown. And we went to the Adlai Stevenson for President headquarters. Mm -hmm. And he volunteered me. I just tagged along and wound up uh, working for Adlai Stevenson. And how old were you again? I was uh, in my teens, mid-teens. Oh, wow. You got involved early. I got involved very early. And for one thing, it was a lot of fun. But there you are with other people who passionately believe in our democracy. And you, you hear uh, uh, Governor Stevenson making speeches. And he really was the personification of what we needed in, in American democracy. And so I got involved by Adlai Stevenson and later other uh, campaigns, gubernatorial campaigns, U.S. Uh, Senate campaigns, uh, mayor of Los Angeles campaigns, mm -hmm. as well as other social justice uh, movements like the civil rights movement, the peace movement during the Vietnam War, or the movement to get an apology uh, and redress from the U.S. government for unconstitutional incarceration. And that's gone into uh, also gay marriage. I mean, you've been out there and you've been out in front of this issue. It's, it's got to be satisfying to you to watch. It seems like we're, we're hearing about another state every week kind of toppling with their that's gay right. marriage ban. So tell me about that. Well, it's um, been very fulfilling, not just marriage, but equality for LGBT people. But now we have 19 states plus our ca national capital, Washington, D.C., that have marriage equality. But it's a patchwork all over the United States, you know. And it, it, today, people are mobile. They get married in, say, New York, and they might move to Arizona right. for, for, because of a job situation. Right. And their marriage doesn't count for, count for anything. And that's not the American way. We live in the United States of America. And I'm very confident that within the next three years, uh, tops, mm -hmm. we will have the United States of America because uh, the U.S. Supreme Court is going to take up the marriage equality bill right. uh, the, the next session, and uh, it's go they are you know they've already ruled last year, last summer on uh, marriage equality specifically for certain states, right. uh, specifically for uh, New York and on Proposition Eight for for California, but uh, we will have. I think, equality throughout the United States. Yeah, I think a lot of people agree with you on that. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> to beat decay, ah, what's this yes. all about? I mean, it looks pretty cool from what I've seen. I mean, your life story, really, in a way. It, 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 exactly. And um, people thought that we had it made, but actually this uh, film documentarian, uh, Jennifer uh, Crute from uh, San Francisco, came to us and said she'd like to make a documentary on our lives, which mm -hmm. was very flattering. But um, we did not want a uh, vanity project. You know, so many actors have uh, right. look at me, films look at me. me. How glamorous my right. life is, how intelligent, you know, or how busy, you know, so forth. We wanted a, a, a documentary that's a genuine documentary. And we thought it'd be a great opportunity to show the normality between uh, Brad and me in our relationship. Uh, married for the last six years, uh, together for 27 years altogether. And uh, then that might shatter people's stereotyped Im Im images of LGBT people. Right. Uh, yes, we have normality in our lives, but you know, also the craziness of being married to an actor, you know, going off on location or, or going on a promotional campaign. But we, we thought this is a way to reach the wide, decent, fair-minded middle of America. Mm -hmm. And uh, sure enough, it is doing that. And we're here to, uh, so that we can uh, uh, go to the uh, 7 o'clock screening of uh, To Be To K at Harkins, Harkins Shea. I oh, think good. that's what the theater yes. is called. And Brad and I are going to do a, a Q&A after the screening. So if people go out there tonight, they'll be able to talk with you and say Absolutely. hello. Absolutely. We'll oh, I'm be sure there. In the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and 77 years old, how do you keep the energy that you have? Is there something you could tell everybody? I, I'd love to be the way you are when I'm 77, I'll tell you that. Oh, I'm sure you will if you look yeah. the way you are right now. <laughs> I believe in the laws of nature. Okay. Eat properly, exercise properly, rest properly, and keep the mind engaged. Mm -hmm. That's the way my grandmother was. And she had a full, rich uh, fun life all the way 
to a century and four years. Laughing all the way, you said. Laughing all the way. <laughs> Can I get an oh my? Oh, <clears throat> let me clear my oh, throat for this. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Takei, what a pleasure meeting you. Call me George. Okay, George, nice meeting you. Live long and prosper. <laughs> Back at you. <laughs> at least for 104 years. <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> Great stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you.